Informational Monday. Well, i got to come up with a better title for this. So, as you can see from the title, this is a, a video about how to make sure that if you're hunting for a car and a project for yourself, that you don't get wrong information or misinformation about what a car is or is not based on your search for a genuine 65 GT model. Um, and again, this is not a exhaustive list, but it is the top, I would say the top seven to 10 things that you would need to look for to make sure that you are in fact looking at and considering purchasing a genuine GT. Uh, number one, the very first thing is, is that the GT package, although components of the GT package were available prior to its introduction, the GT package was not introduced until April of 1965, probably coinciding with the one year anniversary of the introduction of the Mustang in April of 64. So if the build date code of your model is not an R, S, T, U, or V, and that's April, May, June, July, and August, like here, that would be June. If it's not one of those five months, if it's prior, and it has elements of a GT, then it's a pre, what's called a pre-GT, and it has pieces and parts from that package, but it's not actually a genuine GT Mustang. That's the number one most important thing. If that build code is not within that five month window, it is not a GT. Uh, the second one is the engine. And the engine code must say A or K. And this is gonna be in your VIN, which is gonna be right there. First one is the build plant, and then this one is the engine code. It must be an A or a K, because only those two engines were available within the GT package. If it's any code other than an A or a K, no matter how it's dressed up as a car, it's not a GT. If you see a fully dressed up GT with all the fixings, but it says C, and it's not an A or a K, and it is not a true GT. Now the third one is going to be about the front brakes. And all 65 GTs were all front disc brakes, all, all, all disc brakes. And they had um, quite a few components from Kelly Hayes. You can identify the Kelly Hayes component markings on the side of the caliper here with the KH. If you can't see that, you can actually see the quick release uh, plate on the top has a KH on it as well. There's also an additional apportioning valve, which I don't have right in front of me, um, that also says KH on it as well, um, that will identify all those KH components as part of the um, upgrades for the front disc brakes of the car. Uh, let's see, what else? Number four, right up front as well is going to be the swing, uh, the, um, the uh, anti-sway bar is gonna be larger. And I have a feeling, if I remember off the top of my head, that it's 11 sixteenths or maybe even 15 sixteenths. It's just under an inch thick. It's going to look thicker um, than a standard sway bar on a car. Um, and that's typically one that, if you have a car that's not really been restored or updated, uh, as would be one thing that takes time to actually replace if you're trying to replace it. Uh, the fifth thing up front is going to be steering. So the steering box for a GT is either going to be, it's going to say on that there's going to be a tag on there, which is going to have an HCC, and then it's going to say AX for manual, manual or AW for power steering. So if you don't have uh, any other information about whether your car did or did not have power steering, but you see an AW on this quick, re quick ratio steering box, you know that was a power steering car. In fact, let me walk over and show you mine. So you can see one example. So here's the original steering box out of the car. And you can see right here, HCC AX. AX is manual steering, quick ratio, 16 to 1 uh, steering box versus the standard 19 to 1 steering box. So that's for uh, the steering box. 
Let's see what else we got here. We got number six. And we'll do... Well, this one's pretty easy. On... Uh, in addition to adding the stripe package on a GT, they removed the trim that would have been right here. So if you see trim on the side of the car, no matter how else it's dressed up, it's not correct. And it wouldn't be correct. Um, and it, it would be more likely to be kind of a mishmash of different pieces added to a regular car. That trim would not be there. And of course you would see the stripes. Most of the cars that were GTs did not have any kind of a rocker molding trim, although it was available as an additional option separate from the GT package. Okay, so on the interior of the car, there's a couple of things. Um, they switch from the regular sweep gauge as part of a package to five gauge cluster. And you can see this cutout section here. Um, you are going to see on a factory GT, you're going to see this is actually different and it's not chopped or or cut with a saw it's actually molded and and stamped as a specific gt dash with that to be able to clear the center cluster i've got a center cluster here which you can see has to clear that here so it's different from the regular sweep if you don't see that or you see that it's been done done with a hacksaw or something much more primitive um, it's likely that it's a converted car. Additionally, the fog lamp switch or fog lamps is going to be right here on the dash or somewhere in this general location. My car is a convertible, so there's also a convertible switch which is right next to it. A little offset, a little, a little higher up in the dash, but pretty much in line with the fog lamp switch. So again, if the fog lamp switch is some other weird place, it's typically a converted car. If you have a combination of a strange spot for your fog lamp switch, and kind of a butchered dash panel, very likely that it's not going to be a GT car. Okay, so we have the switch there. Let's see what we have. Okay, so, and the last thing I wanna to talk to you about now is the um, exhaust, uh, which on the GT was um, dual exhaust, and it was heavy enough that they felt the need to reinforce the car in two places, the back seat and the rear frame rails. And I'll show you both of those stations. So the hangers for the, and you can see the hanger right there. The hanger was heavy enough that it would deform the back seat um, sheet metal. So they added this plate which goes on top of the transition panel and this bolt here that goes through with the two bolts is actually for the exhaust hanger and if you don't see that plate but you see dual exhaust that means that it is not a GT car because all GT cars would have that plate in place to reinforce the hanger for the exhaust. The other one very difficult, almost impossible to reach this here is there's a hole in your in the back trunk area and if you put your finger in this hole you will touch the reinforcement plate that reinforces and prevents this from crushing when they go to bolt on that hanger for the rear exhaust as well. So there's going to be an additional plate inside the frame rail right here but when they bolt that on it doesn't crush the frame rail for that hanger which is also part of hanging the exhaust system. So there's at least eight to 10 different ways that you can ensure on a checklist that, that what you're looking at in a Facebook ad or a eBay ad or whatever ad, whatever advertisement is being shown to you as a quote unquote GT car going down this list to make sure that it falls within these parameters and it falls within the things and the options that were available to car. Now there are more things than just what's listed on here. Um, but these are the big ones. And again, if you cannot identify and you cannot confirm the date code in that range, plus the engine code, 
plus disc brakes, plus the larger sway bar, plus the steering. Usually right here, you don't have to really go any further because all these cosmetic things are typically easier to put on the car. Badges on the fenders and lettering on the fenders and stripes on the bottom of the car and fog lights on the front of the car. Those are easy things to do. Drilling a hole for this is an easy thing to do. Making this look factory is much less likely. Um, the brake components, much less likely. The engine code, much, much, much less likely. And then the build date, even more so. So this is what you're gonna be looking for when you're hunting down a project for yourself. I hope you find what you're looking for. And if you have any questions, you can leave comments in the file. If you know some other part of a GT that I haven't mentioned, that helps identify it as a genuine GT car, please leave it in the comments below. And if you like this video and found it helpful, you can like and subscribe, and it's on to the next adventure. Thanks, guys.